calculating the square root of non-perfect square. The process we are going to follow to find square root of real numbers works perfectly well whether numbers in question are perfect square or not. Let's get started with the, the number 359. We are going to find out square root of 359. So let's write down the number 359 and then place a radical sign above it. This radical sign is also known as the square root. Now, as a step one, write down the number, which is 359, and start making pairs from the right side. We got one pair. The next number, we have to leave it unpaired because there is no other digit available which we can pair with 3. So this 3 is isolated now. And let's start the division this way. Now we can multiply the number with itself. Either we can multiply 1 with 1 and then write the answer here and subtract and 3 take away 1 will give us 2 and then we are going to bring the next pair down. You always have to bring the pair down. So this will be 59. Now we couldn't do 2 times 2 because that would be 4 and 4 is more than 3 that's why we could only do 1 times 1. Now step 2. Step 2 is we are going to bring down this 2 but while we are bringing it down we are going to double it. This will become 2. Now we got a placeholder here on the right side. We can add one more digit on this place but the digit we are going to place on this empty space should be such that when overall number is multiplied by this number that should be closest to 259. If we do 2, 1 and then multiply it with 1, that would be 21, which is very small number. So when we do 22 times 2, that is 44, that is still small. 23 times 3, that is still small. 25 times 5 is still small because that's only 125. So we continue until we go to 200. Uh, sorry, to 8 and write 8 here as well. So 28 times 8 would give us 224, which is the closest we can get. If we do 2 9 times 9, that would be more than 259. That's why we are not going to do it. And we do the subtraction. Again, 4 taken away from 9 will give us 5 and then 3 here and that's it. Now we still have remainder 3 which is uh, not really good sign. So we got to add a decimal here and when we add a decimal we can add a pair of zeros which we can bring down. And here we are going to bring down 3500 and then you remember that when we brought this one down here we doubled it. This time 2 is going to be the same as we already have doubled it. Now 8 is going to be doubled. And when we double 8 this will be what? 16. So we're going to write 6 here and add 1 to this which will give us 36. So now we have a placeholder here and a placeholder here after the decimal point here. And whatever digit we put here we can place the same digit up there. And this time it's 3500, so 
we can do 300 uh, 361 times 1 that would be 361 which is very small if we do 362 times 2 that will be still small we can do up to 8 and then 9 let's do 369 times 9 so this 369 times 9 is going to give us 3321 3321 okay subtract and what are we going to get 10 take away 1 will give us 9 and 9 take away 2 will give us 7 and 4 take away 3 will give us 1 so this is the answer here and now again we can bring down another pair of zeros but no decimal sign this time because you can only place decimal once and let's do the same thing with this while bringing it down 3 has been 3 6 and you can only double the last digit so 9 is gonna be doubled and when we double 9 it will be 18 and we write 8 here but one uh, we are going to add to 6 so this will become 3 7 8 and we got a placeholder here and the placeholder up there so we can either do 3 7 8 1 time 1 3 7 8 2 times 2 so whatever number works and brings the overall product closest to 17,900 probably we are going to work with 4 so if we place 4 here if we place 4 here and 4 here let's see so if you have a, a ha calculator handy you can multiply 3, 7, 8, 4 times 4 and see what is the result the number we got is 15136 and this will give us if we subtract it so 10 take away 6 will give us 4 and then 9 take away 3 will give us 6 and 8 take away 1 will give us 7 and 7 take away 5 will give us 2 but we got a two digit accuracy if we can live with this we can write down the scale root of 359 as 18.94 so this process worked really good even though the number 359 was not a perfect scale and now we are going to try another number and we'll do the same procedure and see if you got the steps we have been doing so this time we are going to find out scale root of 1029 so if we want to find out scale root of 1029 we certainly will write 1029 on the side and then start making the pairs this time these are four digits so we will get two pairs so now if we start the same process we can either do one time one which will give us one very small than small than ten two times two will four which is still smaller than ten three times three will work well because if we go over 4 times 4 will become 16 which is more than 10 and that's not going to work. So 3 times 3 is 9. We did this and then we subtract and take away 9 from 10 will give us 1 here. Okay, what is the next? We bring down this pair and then bring down this 3 here but while bringing it down we're gonna double it and this will become six now we got a placeholder here and we got a placeholder here whatever number we place on this placeholder the same number will be placed up there but if we do 
6 1 times 1 that would give us 61 that's smaller than 129 we can try 6 2 times 2 and see where we get 62 times 2 gives us 124 and that's the closest we can get because now if we do 63 times 3 that will be a lot more than 129 and we don't want to go over 129 so now subtract and this will give us 5 and then there is no more pair which we can use so definitely we are going to place a decimal point up there and then put two zeros here so now just like the process we did in the last question what we are going to do is we are going to write down the six because that's already has been doubled so only last digit will be doubled so this is going to be doubled and this will become four and now the placeholder here and the placeholder here if even if we do six four one and one up there that's already more than 500 so that's not gonna work so what we're gonna do is we place one zero up there and instead of that zero we add two zeros right here so now it's become 50,000 forgot to add zero here as well and now we have an other placeholder here and a placeholder here and we can go 640 one time one which will be lot less than 50,000 so 6402 time 2 will we can try but 6403 time 3 we can try 6404 time 4 we can try it's actually going to work for 7 for 7 here and 7 up there this will give us 44 8 4 9 that's the closest we can get if we go 6 4 0 8 times 8 that will be more than 50,000 so we can only go to that number so whatever we get here is 10 take away 9 will be 1 9 take away 4 will be 5 and 9 take away 8 will be 1 9 take away 4 will be 5 here but we already got the two digit accuracy so we can live with it and two digit accuracy is enough for calculating scale roots 32.07 and that's the scale root of 10 20, similarly if we have a, a fraction a, or a decimal let's try finding scale root of 596.53 the reason i'm doing this third question is that this time there is a decimal point we will start making the pairs after the decimal and the first pair we can make from the right side after the decimal is 96 those after the decimal they will be made pairs starting from left and here is the first pair after the decimal so this will go from left side and this like I already explained goes from right side so here 53 is there are only two digits and we got one full pair from this uh, whole number side I mean the left of the decimal we made a pair 96 and 5 is still left unpaired so we do the same procedure here for 5 596.53 and then we start here with 2 times 2 2 times 2 that would give us 4 and take away 4 from 5 will give us 1 and then bring down this pair 96 and then double this 2 here this will become 4 and what can we place in this placeholder and in this placeholder 
we can go up to 4. For 4 times 4 will give us 44 times 4 is what? 44 times 4 is 4, 4 times 16. 1, 4, 4 times 16 and 1, 17. So we can go to 176. So this leaves us 20 here. And now because there is a decimal, so we're going to place the decimal up there as well. And then bring down the next pair which is 53. And just like you know, when we are bringing this down, 4 will get doubled. This will become 4, 8. And now we got a placeholder here and we got a placeholder here as well. And this time we can go up to... So let's go to 4 and 4 as well. And if we, uh, if you follow this process, you're going to get the answer right. But if you don't practice this procedure, you're going to get it will be forgotten. So use this process to do at least two, three questions. And try to find out square root for any non-perfect numbers.